In today's video, we're going to break down the seven mindset traps and lies that you fall into that actually hold you back from greatness. And my goal with this video is really just shed some light on some of the things that you may be hearing in the personal development space that are causing you to think a certain way. But if you're not getting the results that you want in life, these are probably the reasons why. So let's clear these things out of the way and really make sure that we have a clear view of what we need to do to be able to master our mind and also get what we want out of life, create our reality and everything that we talk about on this channel. So when we talk about mindset traps and lies, we're looking at the things that we've been led to believe through the content that we consume, the people that we listen to and the conversations that we have, the people we have around us. We are constantly programming ourselves to think a certain way. So it's very easy to lead yourself down a rabbit hole and you start to unconsciously believe everything that you're learning along that way. Now, this can be positive if it's taking you in the right direction, but it can also be detrimental if you're believing things that are going to actually pull you away from what you want to create in this world. Like everything that I talk about on the channel, what works for me may not work for you. Take everything I say with a pinch of salt, come up with your own solutions, take what works and scrap what doesn't. Whatever is true for you is true for you. So let's jump into it. Myth number one. So lie number one is fake it until you make it. Now, the reason why fake it till you make it is terrible advice is because it leads you to believe that if you just keep pretending that things are okay and you keep pretending that things are great, then they will eventually improve. Now, of course, we do want to keep our mental focus on the outcome that we want to create. We want to make sure our pattern of focus is always going towards the outcome that we want to create. But we also have to balance that with understanding the reality that we are currently in. A great example of this is that if you ever seen mold on the wall, I remember back in one of my college houses years and years ago, uh, there was a big wall that had tons and tons of mold on it. It was disgusting. And the landlord's solution to solving the mold problem was to just keep painting over it, like layers and layers of paint over the mold. And it would just come out to the surface. It would break through the paint and it would never go away. And it was really disgusting to be in there. I, I moved out shortly afterwards because he just didn't solve the problem. But this is the same thing you're doing when it comes to fake it till you make it. Because what you're doing is you're pretending that something doesn't exist in the hopes that it's going to eventually change. Now, of course, to have true power, to have true confidence within ourselves, we need to direct our mental focus on the outcome that we want to create and stay focused on that. We need to accept and take full responsibility for our current reality because by taking responsibility we take ownership over the situation and we have now taken back our power we have now control over the direction of how we solve this so ideally you don't want to fake it till you make it you want to become the person that sees reality the way it is right now the problems that you need to overcome taking responsibility for those and then using your direct focus and intention to focus on the outcome you want to create while solving these problems in the meantime and taking full ownership over that now the very last thing to remember with this is that if you are painting over the mold in the wall you are suppressing the reality of the problems that exist, which means that if you ignore these things, they start to cause blocks in the mind that will later need to be cleared and addressed because they were not cleared and addressed in that particular moment in time. So we need to be conscious of the fact that if we are ignoring problems and we're trying to focus all of our attention on the positive and ignoring the things that exist in our reality, that means that we are not taking full ownership and these are things that we're going to have to clear and may be holding us back in the progression of our goals. Now, this leads me into trap number two, which is the positivity trap. So the positivity trap is something that I got stuck in for a long time where I was just really hoping that something was going to change if I just kept being positive about everything. Now, the reality of this is that we're completely ignoring the universal principle of polarity. So let's break down polarity. We have polarity right here. It's a spectrum, okay? So you have negative here and you have positive here. So you have, this is the spectrum of polarity. If we are focused solely on the negative, then that means that we create negative blocks in our mind. If we are solely focused on the positive, we are creating positive blocks in the mind. Both of them are just as bad as each other because they create an imbalance. The principle of polarity states that everything has an equal opposite. And if you're too far one side, it means the universe needs to balance things out and give you the other side so that you can experience the balance within. So when we are trying to generate confidence, clarity, and conviction in our every move with everything that we do, we're trying to get to the middle part here, which is where true power actually lies. So when we are focusing solely on the positive, it means that we are seeing that we only want positive. So by default, the universe must balance things out and create the negative outcome, which is usually a massive slap of reality that shows you that focusing on the positive is just going to create more negatives. Because really what is happening here is it's creating an infatuation with being positive. You're becoming obsessed with being positive all the time. And this is where you kind of come across those people who are kind of uncomfortably positive. You know, they're really hype and really kind of 
up about everything and it just feels a little bit weird it feels a little bit wrong this is where you find these people who are too far this side and completely ignoring the negative things that happen in the world because there's an equal amount of both and to be able to create our reality and remove some of these blocks we need to understand that both positive and negative exist in everything if we come back to the wall of mold example it's like painting coats and coats of paint over the wall of mold thinking that that's going to solve the problem it's going to come to a point where the mold gets so bad and keeps pushing through that it's probably just going to spread and destroy the house overall which means it's going to affect you no matter what because by definition the universe has to balance things out so by only focusing on the positive we actually create the negative that's going to come back slap us in the face and show us that this is not the way to think we need to see things from a neutral perspective which is right here in the middle So number three is the belief that you can't change. So I know there's many people out there who believe that they can't change because I was one of these people, if we go back seven or eight years ago, where I was kind of starting to develop myself a little bit, I faced so much resistance because I believed that I was a certain way and I could not ever change. I believed myself to be stuck in a certain identity. Everything that happened in my life was just the way things were. This is how my life was going to play out. And I could never change that. Now, really, what I was doing when I was believing this was actually avoiding the responsibility of taking ownership over my life. And it was only when I actually made that switch and really flipped that, and it was a painful process. It was only when I did that was when I really started to be able to create my own life, create my own reality, and inevitably create a better life for myself. How I did this was really through understanding spirituality, understanding the fact that we are not just here to live a miserable existence and go work a job and then have a family and get the house and then die at some point in retirement that is a very limited perception of reality it was only when i started to understand that we are spiritual beings i can be clear i can be focused i can be convicted i can have purpose i can have meaning in my life and when i started to understand that i was actually more of a spiritual being than i was just a human here on planet earth that's when i started to tap into unlimited potential and i started to see myself as much more powerful than i was before and it's the same for you too if you're sitting there and you're thinking to yourself i am just this way i cannot change you can change because you are also clear you are also focused you are also on purpose you just have to peel back the layers balance your perceptions clear the mind from these blocks that we're talking about here and be able to really see that you are unlimited as well and when you start to see that everything becomes a possibility. You start to see the lessons in life as things just to be learned, not things to fall victim to. And you can take complete responsibility and ownership over your life and therefore start to create the reality that you want. And if you don't believe me right now, I completely understand because we were led to believe this lie in this world that we are a certain way and that society is a certain way. We have to believe certain things and things just are the way that they are. This is a huge, huge limitation for so many people because it forces you to believe that everything just turns out a certain way and we don't have control over our lives. And this just comes from matrix programming. It just comes from society. It comes from the parents that we have and the, the beliefs that we've taken on from them because they are also coming from a limited perception. True power comes from questioning the beliefs that we have about the world, especially the ones that we believe so deeply and we don't even think to question them. They're the ones that we need to question the most. If you think about how you were as a child, you were completely unlimited. You had no limitations whatsoever you would do whatever you want but it was as you started to grow up you started to adopt all of these limitations of beliefs thinking that you were a certain way when in the beginning stages you were completely unlimited you didn't care what anybody thought about you you were there to do whatever you wanted to do and feel whatever you wanted to feel and it was only when you started to grow up where these limitations started to take place so our job on this earth is to really remove these limitations understand more of who we truly are and be able to tap into our limited potential along the way and a lot of this just comes from unlearning the things that we've been led to believe up to this point and then taking ownership over our lives and replacing those limiting beliefs with empowering beliefs so that we can start to create the reality that we want. And the last thing I want to mention on this is that all of these limitations that are perceived in your mind are just false perceptions. They are just a limited perspective as to how you are seeing yourself and also seeing the world. Your self-image and your worldview are affected by these two things and they form your identity. But that is possible to change. I know because I've done this personally myself. I was someone who believed all of the limitations and eventually over time, over these last number of years, I've been able to switch up a lot of these limiting beliefs into empowering beliefs. And along the way, you start to discover more of who you truly are. And when you do that, you can truly tap into your greatness. And in the process, you become more clear, more consistent, more focused, more confident within yourself because you start to believe and you start to understand that you are actually limitless. It's all of these false beliefs that stops you from actually believing that and seeing that in the first place. And this is why I talk about managing your emotions and managing your energy because your emotions and your energy tie these beliefs in place because of past things that have happened in your life that have caused you to believe these things to be true. But when we balance those things out and we remove those limitations, 
you truly step into your power. That brings me to number four, which is thinking all of your thoughts are actually truth. This is very tied to the last point because when we take on all of these limitations that we're forced to believe as we grow up and we take on from other people and society, we start to believe that our thoughts that are coming to us on a day-to-day -day basis are actually our own. And we start to believe that all of our thoughts actually make up who we are. When in reality, sometimes you can get the most random, weirdest thoughts that are actually nothing to do with who you are. You just pick them up from somewhere. But this begs the question, where do thoughts actually come from? Well, if we look at where the beliefs really come from, which is the matrix programming, the societal programming that we've talked about, that kind of causes limitations, these really form the beliefs that you have on a day-to-day -day basis. And when you believe something to be true about the world, and you believe something to be true about yourself, your thoughts follow that pattern and they will usually be in alignment with what you believe about yourself. Now, over time, as you start to shift these limiting beliefs into empowering beliefs and you start to form a new worldview, a new self-image, then you start to remove the limitations and the programming and the beliefs start to change, which means your thoughts change in the process as well. Now, this still doesn't mean that every thought that you have is true, but it does mean that you can start to align them with what you need to believe about the world to be able to get to where you want to be. Because the reality is, none of the thoughts that we have are actually true. Over the last couple of years, I developed a daily meditation practice, and this really helped me solidify this in my mind. Because I used to take all of my beliefs as truth, and I would have so many doubts of what I was able to accomplish. But it was only when I actually started to meditate, I started to see my thoughts as what they were. Because when you kind of sit there and you kind of just observe your thoughts for what they are, you start to see that they come and go, just like passing clouds on a summer's day. And this is a good frame that I've always held at the back of my mind, so that some thoughts that I have can just be disregarded. They're not me, they're just thoughts that I picked up from the ether. And the ones that do serve me, I can lean into those. It's only when we have really negative thoughts about ourselves or we start to see them as things that just control us and dictate our behavior, that's when they start to become limiting because if those thoughts aren't in alignment with the reality that you want to create, it's very easy to get distracted and off purpose and off focus on the thing that you need to be doing. So what we want to do is reprogram our minds. We want to manage our emotions so that our emotions, our thought patterns, our beliefs align with the goal that we're trying to achieve, which means that the thoughts that we have in relation to that actually brings us forward. Because whether we like it or not, as we're starting to remember that thoughts don't control us, we do want them to be in alignment because they are going to inevitably move us into action. And we do need to understand that a lot of the thoughts that we get or interpretations or intuitive feelings that we get are going to be giving us information and signals as to how we're actually supposed to move forward. Now, all of this being said, it's important to understand the thoughts that we do have so that we can see, is this something that is limiting us? Is this something that I need to solve? Is this causing an emotion within me that I do need to kind of explore and understand why I'm actually thinking this thought in the first, first place? Or is this just a thought that I can completely disregard and keep moving forward? So this gets a little bit more complex, but when we tie it to the lessons that we need to learn in life, thoughts can become good feedback and good sources of information. What I mean by this, give you a quick example. If you're sitting in a conversation with somebody and they say something and it starts to trigger you and you start to get thoughts as to why this is starting to trigger you, it's important to have the self-awareness to realize that it's not the person who said it. It's not them causing the problem. It's that this is giving you a signal. This is giving you a piece of information that you need to work on something. Because if you're getting triggered by what someone says and, you start to, and your thoughts start to follow that, that's creating a feeling and a thought pattern within you, which has given you a signal for something that you need to work on. Because I believe that our journey here on Earth is to learn the lessons we need to learn. And we can learn a lot about the things we need to work on based on how we pick up the information that we receive from other people. And I know you might be thinking that there's a bit of a contradiction there when it comes to seeing our thoughts as just passing clouds and not really taking them on as truth, but also understanding that they are there to give us some sort of direction when they are tied with the feeling, depending on the lesson that we need to learn in that particular moment. As humans, we like to think in binaries. We like to think that things are a certain way and this is the exact way to follow, when in reality, it's always both. We just need to stay conscious of how can we get to that middle ground where we're not taking every thought that we have as truth, but we're using them in a way where we can develop who we are as a person and take the information that we need to be able to grow as a person and develop as a human being. Now that brings me to number five, which is massive action is the solution to everything. Now, of course, there is truth to this. I am not saying that massive action is not important. That is the opposite of what we talk about on this channel. But there's a point where you can be consistently taking action in the wrong direction. And taking massive action is not a one size fits all for everything. If we think about taking massive action at every single second of every single day, we're completely ignoring the fact that willpower is actually limited. If you've ever read the book called The One Thing, and he talks a lot about how willpower 
depletes throughout the day. So understanding this, if our plan is to take massive action at every second of every day, then we're ignoring the fact that our willpower is going to deplete throughout the day, which means that we're naturally just going to not get as much work done as the day progresses. It's almost impossible to grab yourself and force yourself to work at every second of every single day and get great work done in the process. You've probably experienced this many times where you write a big long to-do list, you have massive hopes for getting everything done the next day. You get two or three things done in the early parts of the day and then the rest of the day, you go off and you start to procrastinate, you start to do these different things. And you're stuck there at the end of the day feeling guilt and shame for the fact that you did not finish your, your list of things to do or you did not complete the things that you had laid out in your calendar. The thing is, these feelings of guilt and shame of not being able to complete the tasks and having this unrealistic expectation of how much work you can get done starts to cause these blocks in the mind. You start to feel incongruent with who you say you want to be. You start to lose a little bit of confidence because in your mind, you're like, I can't even rely on myself. I can't even get the things done that I said I was going to get done. But in reality, you're trying to take massive action to solve all of your problems, ignoring the fact that you're actually creating these blocks in your mind in the first place by having unrealistic expectations of how much work you can actually do in a day. The other problem with this is we start to believe that we have unlimited energy when that's just not the case. We're naturally going to have more energy in the morning when our cortisol starts to spike and that's going to deplete throughout the day as well as our willpower. And then when you're in this hustle and grind massive action type mentality, you're just depleting your energy and actually causing yourself to produce low quality work. And I believe that most entrepreneurs get stuck in this mentality because of the grind hustle culture that's on social media, thinking that you need to be working at every single moment of every day, when in reality, you could be consistently taking action in the wrong direction and consistently taking action on a clear path to burnout. The way I see it, it's not stacking things to do on your to-do list. It's more about prioritizing the things that are going to move the needle the most and allocating all of your energy to those things early in the day or wherever you feel the most energy and also including self-care routines and a holistic approach to life so that you can rejuvenate your energy live a full life and still get great work done in the process. This grind and this hustle mentality is just a matrix within the matrix. People think that they're getting out of the nine to five grind when they're actually just creating a bigger grind for themselves, which creates a matrix within the matrix, which is the thing that we're actually trying to get out of. The goal is freedom. The goal is autonomy. That's not what we're doing. We're stuck in this kind of grind mentality. We're ignoring these other parts of our lives. We destroy our relationships. We don't build our network, which are all the components of living a full life. So this is a massive myth. Massive action is incredibly important, but it's not the solution to absolutely everything. So even though we have a singular focus and we're moving towards that direction, whether that's our purpose or business or whatever it is that you're working on, we also balance these other things in the background so that we don't just lose them and destroy them in the process. But that doesn't mean that each area of our life is of equal importance. That's not what I'm saying. It's saying that we have one singular focus. We strive towards that. We put all of our energy towards that, which is usually our purpose. And then everything else it may take a back seat from time to time, but we make sure that we nurture those relationships. We make sure that we fill up our energy buckets in these other areas and these other life pillars so that we can actually rejuvenate our energy to put back into our purpose and our focus. That brings me to trap number six, which is believing that you already know something. So this is a big trap because when we believe that we already know something, it's our ego taking over. We're basically saying that we already understand everything about this one thing and that we don't need to learn anymore. When we do this, we completely close ourselves off to actually developing our knowledge even further. For example, how many times have you read a quote or watched a video or understood a concept? And every time that you refer back to it, you start to see it in a slightly different perspective. Why is that? Well, it's because you're progressing as a human being and you may receive a piece of information right now and you will receive whatever you're supposed to receive in this particular moment in time. But when you develop as a human being and you start to develop in these different life areas that we talk about, then you're going to get a new perspective. And when you get a new perspective, you could come back to that same piece of information and get a new piece of knowledge. And when you get that new piece of knowledge, that could be the thing that propels you into the success that you want. So the way I see it, it's always coming back to stepping into the identity of the student, being a student of life and always being open to learning new things, even if you feel like you've learned it before, keeping an open mind. Nobody knows everything. I definitely don't claim to be an expert. I'm simply just sharing the things that I've learned along the way in the hopes that it helps you. But I'm very, very aware that I'm also a student of life and I will always continue learning and I will never have all of the answers or all of the information, but I can simply just share everything that I'm learning at this particular moment in time in the hopes that it helps you guys as well. So number seven is thinking what goes around doesn't come back around. And this is such a common one. I'm definitely guilty of this as well myself, where we believe that we should somehow be treated differently than the way that we treat other people. Everything in life is a mirror. How you think and feel about yourself, your worldview, your paradigm, everything is going to reflect back into the world. That's what you're going to experience in your reality. But also coming back to the things that you do in the world. When you are lying to somebody, when you are lying to yourself, and then you get mad at somebody else for lying to you, that is an example of this. Because what happens here is you're expecting to have no consequences for your actions. 
and expecting other people to treat you differently. This is a massive, massive trap because this causes people to get into a loop of just experiencing karma. You may be familiar with karma. This is where what goes around comes around. That's where the saying comes from. And this is expecting that what goes around doesn't come back around. It's kind of like throwing a boomerang and trying to hit somebody and not realizing that it's going to come back around and hit you at some point as well. And that has to happen. So with this last point, I want you to be conscious that everything that you put out into the world is going to be reflected back to you at some point. If you want to receive more in your life, give more to other people. If you want to receive kindness, be kind to other people. If you want to experience love, if you want to experience abundance, you want to experience high level emotion, then you must give that into the world in whatever way possible. If you're trying to get more clients or more people to see you as an authority, then you've got to provide more value to the marketplace so that that comes back around. It's almost like reciprocity. It's the same thing. It's the same idea. You may be doing something that is unethical. You may be doing something that you feel is not the right thing to do. And you may be thinking that you know, if nobody else finds out about it, then that's fine. But you will always know you will always know at the core of your being whether this is the right thing to be doing or not. And until you correct that, it's just going to sit there. It's going to cause these blocks in the mind. It's going to cause guilt, cause shame, and cause you to be feeling that you are not the person that you're trying to become. You're not in alignment with that because at the back of your mind, you know what you did. So be very, very careful with this. If there's something that you feel is unethical, if there's something that you feel you need to correct, correct that as soon as possible and watch your life change in the process. Because when we hold on to these things and we try to ignore them, we try to suppress them, we try to put them to the side and think that they don't exist, that moves us away from actually experiencing things like peace, things like tranquility, and moves us towards kind of this conflict that happens within ourselves that we're facing and we may seem fine on the surface, but underneath it all, we're battling with this thing. So if there's anything in your life right now where you feel like you need to correct it, you feel like you need to be more clear about your intentions or anything revolving around that, correct it as soon as possible. Put a plan in place to make it happen, whether that's having a hard conversation with somebody, whether that's putting a plan in place to be able to solve it, or whether that's just being openly honest with somebody and openly honest with yourself, facing that full on, facing those emotions and allowing it to pass through you, clear that and have the intention to correct it. Because sometimes even the intention is enough to really just start the whole transformation process and you'll be able to move from these lower level emotions like guilt and shame up into these higher level emotions of acceptance of integrity, of peace. And that's where you're really going to get the best results in life. So these are some of the biggest mindset traps and lies that you need to be aware of. What are your thoughts? Drop them in the comments below. What are some of your biggest takeaways? And if you want to go deeper on some of these ideas and really start to get the transformation that you're looking for, I want you to check out this video right here. I think it's going to be really helpful for you. I'll see you there.